I'm going old school tonight. I know I'm coming on late. Been uh, been a busy night. I um, <clears throat> I had a uh, my buddy Dave that's been in my videos with uh, with Rhett uh, came over and I bought this neck from Warmoth for my guitar and it had problems with it. So Dave had to come over and take all the hardware and take the neck off so I can ship it back and get it fixed. So. Uh, so some of you saw the drum video. Um, by the way, so I think somebody posted it on Reddit. I was just looking at that. I just saw it from the video. And if you guys want to upvote it, it'll get a lot more views. Hold on, I'm going to find you the... Uh, I'm going to find the thing here. I think this is it. Let's see if this link will post. If you guys want to upvote it on Reddit here, you can. I don't know who posted it there. But uh, it's in the drum uh, drums forum. Um, so the thing about this drum video, okay, so the video was, th I had more songs on there. We had Rush, we had uh, Failure, um, uh, I had, um, Josh Freeze from uh, the, um, the song Weak and Powerless from uh, Perfect Circle. Uh, I had a lot more drum sounds on there, but what's up, Brett? Uh, but I, um, but the video was 38 minutes long, and I thought, oh man, I mean, I made some long videos, but I haven't made a produced video that's 38 minutes. I mean, other than, than, than something that's a whiteboard, um, uh, that, that is a whiteboard, my hair is, looks totally weird here, whiteboard video. I had Bruford in there, um, uh, Tom Sawyer I had in there for, for Rush, Metallica. Although Metallica, this is interesting. So one of the things about the drum sounds is that I went for natural sounds, and, and Rhett and I did. That was a big part of this, were the natural sounds that are not really augmented by samples. And when people said, I can't believe you did this without, without, um, without the Black Album, which has great drum sounds, but they are heavily augmented by samples. They are mainly samples in there. Um, so that I, you know, that can this can be a series, but of course, you know, I'm going to do the 20 greatest guitar sounds of all time, the 20 greatest bass sounds, and everything. 20 greatest keyboard sounds. Man, I can do the 20 greatest organ sounds. I could even think of that right off the top of my head. Um, but you know, it's interesting because a lot of people think that some sounds are better than others. And then you isolate them. Like some of the rush sounds are not necessarily, it's the performances that are great. And there's a lot of space for the drums because they're not really dense. But um, but the um, but when you isolate the sounds, they are not necessarily of the level of some of the things that I played. Chris, where have I been? I Oh, I've been busy, man. I have no assistant. What's up, Rhett? So, um, anyways, so you got you guys notice that's a new uh, two camera shoot. So I have a new camera that I got, and then my other camera that I've been using forever. I got a new lens. Um, I got a new lens for. So that was a that was. My two that was my two cameras, and I learned how to do after 600 videos. Rhett, who doesn't even use Final Cut Pro, looked up on YouTube how to do a multicam shoot, and uh, I I did not know that until today, which is ridiculous. It's amazing that I don't know how to do stuff like that. Thanks, Rhett. Rhett says, oh man, this is really easy. 
It wasn't quite easy. It's still, we couldn't, because we recorded the audio separate. It's kind of confusing when, uh, um, so Clayton, for the drum video, yeah, the drum video, yes. And the, for the Beatles video, um, yeah, the drum video today, but I got the new lens for the Beatles video that I did with Tim, but I didn't have the new camera for that, but I have a new camera. So I've got two cameras now. I had to buy another nice camera, a nicer camera than I had because I have the Lukather thing coming up and, and uh, uh, I need to have two really good cameras to do, to do interviews with. Um, and I need to get a little screen. I have monitor, I have computer monitors hooked up to these things so that we can see that we're in focus. Cause I can't, you can't see, first of all, my Sony camera I got doesn't have a lens that, uh, a screen that turns around. Um, so, and, and the other one, my Canon has a screen that turns around, but I can't see it. I got to start doing makeup now. <laughs> oh man, do I look that bad? Um, yeah, that thing is d very clear. Uh, I was I was realizing, Rhett, that, you know, when I asked you about the two squares, um, Dennis, what's up? What's up, Pat? Um, please, with the uh, with the makeup, I know. So the the. I think, Rhett, because I was closer to the camera than you were, it did the white square around my head and it did the gray square around your head. Hey, Aunt Penny. Um, boy, everybody's on tonight. This is great. Thank you, Chris. Um, so the, the thing about this, my new Sony camera is that it does incredibly fast focusing uh, on it, but... And Rhett, I didn't tell you this, but I noticed that I th I think that the camera makes noise when it's focusing. I'm not sure if that's true because uh, we didn't really listen to the. Um, you noticed that, right? Exactly. Oh, you noticed that with the uh, with the with the two squares around our heads, right? Um, so I used. I mean, we're recording it with a separate microphone and then merging it. Um, the focus is amazing on it though. It's super fast focus. You know, you're not going to, you're not going to hear the noise Clayton, cause I'm not using the, the audio from the camera, but the, um, but the, the thing focuses so quickly, the Sony that it, that you can, I think you can hear the, the lens moving. It's, um, it's really great though. Really great. And I had to, um, in order to get the video, I, I, I have to sometimes, um, downsize the, the, the video size. I have to compress them. Uh, I, it went from 2.8 gigs down to 700 megs, but I use the program handbrake to do that. Otherwise it takes forever to upload. Um, okay. So some people were asking about, about rush, um, I was going to use Tom Sawyer. I mean, obviously this can be expanded upon this, uh, this thing, but we tried to use a different, a lot of different drum sounds. Any worries about being blocked? Yes, Brett, always, always worries about, about being blocked. Um, but the, uh, one of the things that I didn't even get to talk, I mean, the part of this, of editing the video down from 38 minutes to 28 minutes, which is still a long video for YouTube. What's up, Ronnie? Is that the, there are things that I wanted to talk about in the video that I really didn't, you know, that, that I think that, uh, that we could have expounded upon. For example, the drums don't get balanced just by themselves. Now, when John Bonham is playing it, the old drums were balanced. If you're listening to, uh, you know, Charlie Watts from the Rolling Stones, you're listening to any of the old drum parts, Bernard Purdy, that that uh, those are all uh, where the drummers are self-balancing, meaning they are um, they are playing all the drums of 
at the correct volumes. They're not playing the hi-hat too loud with the snare too quiet. If you saw the little clip I had of Steve Gadd, you'll notice that he was not bashing the drums in the clip, although he was talking when he was demonstrating. And if you see some videos, you'll see he really will hit the drums very hard. But these drums, the drum balance on these things, it's not just the drum recording. I mean, we were talking about the drum recording, but part of the recording is the is the balance of all the drums with each other. The hi-hat being at the right level, the snare being at the right level. This is these are all two mixes of drums. Now, when I played the Led Zeppelin one, that was done that that, that only two tracks were devoted to the drums on that. Because I was playing from the multi-track. Um, Black Hole Sun, for example, Soundgarden, the the drums were a, a stereo drum mix. And the story that I heard with the producer, Michael Beinhorn, is that that particular song, they tracked the drums, uh, they had bounced the drums down to two, cha to two channels. So there was not a lot of mixing with that. And that's a massive, massive sound. Super Unknown's a really interesting record about the tracking. Michael Beinhorn used to spend a lot of money on records, but he did some incredibly inventive things. What's up, Jack? Um, for example, the bass. I was soloing the bass on um, for Rhett on um, Fell on Black Days. And he says, man, bass is huge. It really sounds different. I said, well, they mic'd a PA system with the bass. And the, the Jason Cossaro was the uh, was the engineer on Super Unknown. What's up, Desmond? And these are the unsung heroes. And I'm sorry that I didn't devote enough time to the engineers, the producers, and the mixers, and the drummers with the videos. Because they all obviously all deserved a shout-out, but these videos will go on uh, forever with that. I, I'm, you know, I'm surprised that, that doing 20 drum sounds took 28 minutes, but, uh, I really edited a lot out of it. Regardless, I'm going to do one on guitar sounds. I'm going to do one on bass sounds. I'm going to do one on keyboard sounds, things like that. And I think that'll be a fun series. And if this was available, when I, started producing if i were able to hear these solo drum tracks like on audio slave or whatever it it would have been incredible nari i'm gonna have you on on the uh, keyboard one nari to talk about that the keyboard sounds we'll talk about elton john and we'll talk about billy joel and we'll talk about all the all the uh the different keyboard sounds that are on there. Uh, so yeah, these are references. Um, fair warning guitar sound. So the, yeah, things like that. The guitar sounds, I mean, these are these ones to me are easy to think of. Money for Nothing, for example, the sound on that. That is a, 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 that is a completely unique guitar sound. Um, I could do credits. Yeah, I should do that, Daniel. That's a th you know what? Not having an assistant, that's one of the hard that's one of the difficult things is to um is to do, is to uh is is all that. Um how would you mic a PA? That is a great question, Chris. You mic a, pre a PA, oh, so they they set up a PA with 18 you know, with 18 inch speakers, you know, subs, and they're miking it. So you'd mic it with, with microphones that pick up low frequency information. Uh, I'm not sure what they would have used, but I would imagine something like Neumann 47 FET, for example. Would That would be a great mic. That was the mic I used on Tim Smith for the Beatles video. The overhead mic that he's singing into is a 47 FET. Uh, and that is a, a mic that picks up low frequencies really well. And obviously any kind of mic like, um, 
my AKG D30 that I have that, that I did on the Beatles on the Ringo part is a great low-end kick drum mic. Although I would think if those guys are recording, miking a PA system, that, that they're going to want the waveforms to develop. So some of these low, low notes take, for example, uh, I have some... Uh, I have some people on here that, that would know this. Um, you know, a low E that's 82 hertz, or I'm sorry, 41 hertz, takes, I don't know, 100 feet for the wave to, to go through one cycle. Is that possible? Is it 100 feet? Who knows, who knows this? Dennis, are you on here? So, somebody must know how long a low E needs to travel um, to to have the so, the sound wave go through one complete uh, uh, motion at, at 42, 42 hertz. That's why you have to have big rooms to let the sound develop. Uh, so you have to place your mic in the right spot also when you're miking the room. And, and you want to have a good sounding room that doesn't have a bunch have standing waves in it. So, um, so yeah, so there's that. The, uh, when you hear the drum, the, the bass sound on Super Unknown, it, the bass has so much extension. Uh, some of the other stuff that they did on that record, and I want to have Michael Beinhorn. I've actually talked to him about, um, about doing a, uh, what's up, Daniel? I've I've also I've talked to Michael Beinhorn about doing an interview, and I'd love to talk to him because he's done not only did he do Super Unknown, which is a phenomenal sounding record, but um, the band Social Distortion, their best sounding record, he did he did uh, Grave Diggers Union by um, uh, Grave Dancers Union. I'm sorry, um, um, Soul Asylum. He did their record. Okay, so 1130 feet or so is that right, David? Wait, we have 28 feet and we have 1130 feet. Um, okay, so so the other thing too is I've been drumming in a lot of my videos lately. My Beatles video. Uh, what did I, what else did I drum in? Um, I, I I play drums in a couple of the videos. What's up, Rick? Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to think of what other one. Oh, my ACDC video. Um, I don't know if anyone noticed in the Beatles video, your online wave calculator says 13 feet, 28 feet. Um, I don't think it's 13 feet. 28 sounds sounds right to me. I don't know. Um, um, well, I'm not going to open up a wave calculator because I can't go to that. Okay, well, anybody, you guys can click on that if you want. I don't know if, it, if this uh, will show here. There we go. The sparkle kit is okay. So, the, so about the sparkle kit that I had in the Beatles, Beatles video, it's it's part Ludwig. Okay, this is what's interesting about it. The floor tom is a Ludwig. It's a it's a 1970 Ludwig floor tom. The kick drum is a Leedy. Okay, so it's a. Uh, um, yeah, it's a long wave, so you have to have a long room for the wave to develop, okay? That's why, that's one of the things. My live room here is 43 feet. So, um, so it's, it's a nice long room where the, where, you know, where these waves don't hit in the middle of a, a you know, um, a, a cycle. Well, I, I'm going to have a, a, we'll have a physicist or a, a mathematician on here to, to talk about standing waves. Um, uh, but the, uh, so the kick drum is a leady. 
my rack tom is a slingerland, okay? But all these drums, and I said this in one of my drum videos, all the drums, for the most part, high-end drums in the 50s, because the kick drum is, the, is from the 50s, the, ra the floor tom is from 1970, the rack tom is from mid-60s. But all the maple three-ply are maple poplar maple, okay? So that is a, um, a 16th inch ply of maple, then the middle ply is poplar, and then there's a, the inner ply is um, 16th inch of maple again. So it's maple, poplar, maple. That's a three-ply drum. They have maple reinforcement hoops on them so they don't go out of round. Now, all the drum manufacturers back then, Rogers, Slingerland, Leedy, Ludwig, uh, one of the ones that didn't construct their drums like that are, let's see, did Gretsch have... Um, I don't know if they had the reinforcement hoops. I'm trying to think about the old Gretches. But those, all those drum companies, you can mix and match the drum kits and it doesn't matter because, um, uh, because the drum construction is identical on them. And you get ones that are in good, uh, good shape. I had my, that rack tom. This is not quite authentic to what Ringo would have done. I have a, I actually have a 1416 instead of a 1316. Uh, and my 14, I had refurbed by a guy here in Atlanta that, that recovered it to match that kit. Uh, but I love that Leedy kick drum. It's got huge bottom end. It works well with a hole or without a hole, so double-headed. Um, um, yeah, it's, it's great stuff. They were standardized. Exactly. They were, um, uh, in the, uh, 10 years ago, <clears throat> 15 years ago on eBay, 10 years ago or so, you could go buy drums by pieces and put together great drum kits. I bought the kick drum. That Leedy, it's a 24 by 14 for 50 bucks. That kick drum is worth way more than that. I mean, not by itself, though, and not at the time. And it's hard to find people selling single drum pieces nowadays. But back in the old days in, in, in eBay, you could find great deals. I bought every one of those drums separately on eBay for nothing. I bought the that floor tom, that Ludwig floor tom for 75 bucks. I bought that the Slingerland rack tom for 50 bucks on eBay. Like I said, more than 10 years ago, probably 2005, something like that. So uh um so I would buy parts of kits. I have a, another Slingerland tom that um that I have sitting over here that I bought separately. Hold on, I'm going to grab this for a second. I love talking about drums. So I never talk about drums on here. So this is a 13-inch Slingerland Tom from the... This is from the, uh, let's see if it has a date in here. It doesn't have a date. I'd say probably from the mid 60s or so. Okay, so you can see it has the muffler on it. You see the muffler right here? It's, it's uh, hold on, right there, that muffler inside. Okay, now that, <clears throat> typically what I do is I tape it here. Okay, I tape it so that it doesn't, because that will rattle and I make sure it's off the head. Sometimes I'll go in, or usually I would go in and I bend it because I don't usually use those, although you can use them. Um, and you can see here, this is a, uh, you can see the maple reinforcement hoop here. It's on there and you can see it on the, on the other head. You see, there's, a, there's a, a thin hoop around there. Well, that keeps the drum round. 
And um, the drum construction of this Slingerland is exactly the same as those other um, as those other drums. So we would just mix and match, uh, mix and match these anytime. Man, this head on here, I don't even know how old this head is here. I have no idea. This is a really old head on here. But this is a drum I bought off eBay years and years ago, and it's it's a great, great drum. I love Blue Sparkle. Is 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 actually my favorite. I want to have a full kit in Blue Sparkle. I'd love to have an old Ludwig Blue Sparkle, but um, I've got my Ludwig is Champagne Sparkle, which is cool. But I I think Blue Sparkle is uh, is far far cooler. Um, So yeah, that's, uh, I love drums. I love drum construction. You have to be, I mean, to me, to be a producer, um, you have to be an expert at drums, I think. You gotta be an expert at all kinds of drums. Acoustic drums and elect electronic drums and drum loop loops, everything. Am I planning on doing any movie score videos? I am absolutely planning on doing more movie score videos. This week, as a matter of fact. Uh, I'm gonna get back to some of my old school Rick videos like that, and I've been promising. Uh, do I have a Gretsch kit, Subi asked? I do have a Gretsch kit, I have American, um, uh, what kit do I have? I have an American, whatever it is, standard Gretsch kit with uh, probably five or six pieces. Um, classic jazz recording stuff. How did they capture that sound? Well, that's a whole video there, Brett, to talk about. I love talking about these classic jazz recordings. Of course, we have to do that properly. We have to go to tape as well. Um, let's see. What manufacturer do I like? A to D box for DAW. Um... Well, it really depends, Rick. It's, um, you know, the best stuff is Burl, Burl Audio that I've used. I was an early endorser of Burl. Um, I, they make the best converters, I think. They make the best sounding converters. And I found out about Burl from the owner, Rich Williams, that um, I contacted years ago because I loved the um, the Burl B1 uh, mic pre that he did. He did a B1 and a B1D, B-U-R-L, Burl. And they have a, a converter called the Mothership. It's a rack mount that, uh, it's it's a an enclosure that you can place in different converters. Uh, but anyways, Rich started out working for uh, Universal Audio and he was one of the developers of the 2192 converter that they had. Now the thing about the 2120, uh, so so Rich left there, the, the, wait, wait, the 2192 is no longer manufactured by Universal Audio, but they are great converters. And the thing about it is that it's an in and out uh, converter. It also has um, transformers on both ends, okay, which gives it warmth. So Rich went and started Burl Audio. He left Universal Audio and he started Burl Audio and that's what he does. They have um, they have transformers on, on the in and out of these converters and they're incredibly warm sounding. Um, they're not cheap. He started out with a, the Burl B2 Bomber. That was his two channel one that's like the uh, 2192, except he only made an A to D one, and then he made a D to A one. The thing about the Universal Audio that I liked is that it was A to D, D to A, okay? So it, went, it, it did both. Um, but he's moved on, and now he makes the, uh, the mothership. I mean, these are not cheap. These are expensive. I'm not, I'm not lying to you, but these are the best-sounding converters that there are, period. So, um, you know, if you're into high-end audio... And, you know, you, 
want your stuff to sound good, you know. You know, it's interesting. Um, I, I have, um, I tried every clock on the market. I tried the $6,000 rubidium clock. I got all the Vintage King or the manufacturers used to send them to me to, to try out. And we did a lot of recording, a lot of tests on these things. You know, I wish I had my YouTube channel back then when we were doing all these things because it was really fun. The shootouts that we would do with all the microphones and the converters and everything and having, having every engineer in town come over to my studio and do that, that was so fun. I actually have the sessions to all that. We I have a session where we did all these small diaphragm condenser mics, large diaphragm condenser mics and, you know, and and have a whole room full of engineers sitting here. It was you know, engineers and producers, it was great. Um, Apogee Converters, Brett, uh, they make really good converters. Um, Joe just put how much the mothership is. <laughs> you guys see that? 18 grand. Yeah, 24 by 32 modular, D to A, A to D. The B80. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's expensive stuff. You know, the, this high, this pro audio stuff. I'm glad I'm not in pro audio, although I have all this pro audio gear. I'll tell you what else is expensive is camera gear. Am I a composer? Well, Jim... You must not, I'm not sure what you're doing on this channel if you don't know, um, if you don't know that. Subi, 18 grand, you'll stop and grab one tomorrow. Exactly. Um, you might have to work up to that. Well, look, you can buy it. It comes in modules, so you can buy it. You don't have to necessarily buy 24 of them. You know, you can buy a few of them to start. And, um... You know, it's it's kind of I, I liken it to this. When I when I started had my studio when I first started doing um, my own when I first had my own ISO booth and control room. So what I did there was a studio in town here, a great studio called Tree Sound, and I used to rent two rooms. One of the rooms I converted into an ISO booth, and the other to a, a control room. And I would pay a monthly, my rent, it was a rent. Um, so the, what you would do is, um, is I would track the drums downstairs. Um, my buddy Dave Cobb, producer in Nashville, he had a Neve board there that I worked on all the time. So I would track in his room and I'd use his Neve. And... I um, would then bring it up and do overdubs in my room. And then as I started having more successful records, I spent my money on microphones and mic pre's. So I eventually, you know, was able to afford a Neve 1073. I mean, I bought other mic pre's beforehand. I used, I had API 512s, which I, which I don't care for. I don't care for, for the, the newly manufactured APIs. I don't think that they sound that great. Um, even though their EQs sound very good. Their 560 EQ, their 550A and 550V sound fantastic. But the mic pre's don't sound good to me. They don't sound like old, old school APIs. So I bought my first 1073, then I bought a second 1073, and then I bought a pair of 1081s, and I started building out my, um, my mic pre collection like that. And then you do the same thing with converters, you know, if you can afford it. But... Yeah, they didn't have stuff like this out then. I mean, the Burl, Burl's been around for probably um, 10 years or so. But um, we're talking here, but not the type most of us could afford, exactly. Brett, good night, sir. 
Um, and the Avalons are perfectly good. I love 737s, and they have excellent EQs. They have great parametric EQs. So anyways, this um, all this gear stuff is complex. It really is. Um, and you guys can tell that I like talking about it. And I never talked about it. I, I really rarely talk about it on my on my videos, but um, but I want to in the future. As far as film scoring videos and my, and some music theory videos, um, two thousand six Burl. Okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. I, there's a funny picture of me on their website. I think they still have it up there. I had a joke picture online of me with a fake beard that was an iPhone app. And I think that they thought that that was really me. It was a, it was a scraggly beard. And they have that up there with, with fake sunglasses. And they actually put that up there as a picture of me on, um, on their board, on their uh, website. I don't know if they still have it there. I, I hope they don't. But th they didn't realize that that was a joke picture. Uh, all right, listen, I've got to go. I got stuff to do tonight. Yes, that's a Leslie cabinet behind me there. It's in my new video on the Beatles that I did with Tim Smith from Jellyfish. Um, you guys are the best. Yes, Vincent, I do record with effects on the way in. Uh, I want to announce one other thing too. I'm going to be doing a um, part of a composition seminar in Italy this summer with Elliot McKinley that you guys see on here many times. And um, it's going to be, it's June, I'm sorry, it's, it's May 26th through June 3rd in Elba, Italy. And um, <clears throat> if you guys are interested, write to me and I'll give you the information. I'm going to be there for a week. And uh, you guys, anybody that signs up, uh, there's a, uh, you can actually look it up, but I'll, I'll send you the info or the flyer from it. Um, and Elliot is going to be, um, they have a whole, they have a bunch of different, uh, professors or composition teachers teaching there. It's going to be a great, great time. I'm really excited about it. So the cutoff date is December 15th. I'm going to mention it in my live stream that I do tomorrow. Uh, again, so I just want to tell you guys that while well, everybody's on right now, so I will be in Italy for one week. I've never been to Italy and I'm total, totally psyched about it. It's going to be great. Okay, you guys are the best. I got to go. Have a great night. Thank you so much. Bye.